kind of away from you. Welcome to the 10 Acre Woods. My name's Mark, and today we are doing a wool processing uh, class. So uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to find out how we process our wool. And uh, we tried it a little bit uh, earlier on today. There was better lighting because of the natural light coming in from the inside, outside, inside. Um, but uh, there was somebody that was uncomfortable with the uh, video, so we stopped and figured we would just postpone it. And now we can focus on you and your questions. So we have Joanne as the first one in. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to flip the camera around here, and there's Tara and Tiana. Hello. All right, okay. So um, I'm doing fine little planes, 2002. <laughs> I'm not going to go through and, and, uh, and say hi to everybody, um, but I can always go back and yes. if you leave comments afterwards. Yes. Uh, so we've got nine people on now. So we'll just, um, we'll give it a couple minutes to let some people uh, come in. In the meantime, uh, here, <laughs> I'll show you uh, our little puppies here, Toby on the right and Maggie on the left. And look at, he's such a gentleman letting his, uh, his girl eat. And then there's Nick's. Uh, so if you follow our Facebook page, you would have seen Nick's loves the wool. Uh, so whenever there's wool out, she gets into that. It acts like catnip. Yeah, it's kind of like All catnip. All the cats we've seen or people who've had around wool, they say it's totally like catnip. <laughs> and then of course, here's the other ones. The cat uh, so. The cat the Black Cat Tower. Uh, so Nyx was a rescue from last year. And uh, the one on the right here, this is Anara. And that up there is Lucifer and he's cleaning mom. And Rhea, oh no, sorry, that's Rhea up top. Lucifer's down here. <laughs> They're all black, what could I say? <laughs> hey, yes, yeah, so we got this cat tower here. Uh, okay, so we've got 12, 13 <laughs> people on. What? Oh, what is? Oh, Mom shoved Nix in there. Yeah, she's, so she, happy. she's probably in heaven in here. <laughs> she says, I'll, I'll just stay in here. This is nice and cozy and comfy. <laughs> <laughs> she rubs it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay, so we're going to start off with um, washing the wool. Uh, so we shear our own sheep and we do that in. Um, yeah, early June. We want to make sure that the uh, the cold weather has kind of passed uh, yeah. before we take off their coat. <laughs> yeah, when you shear a sheep, uh, we shear in June, and then you have to make sure that they do not go out in the rain. Uh, it takes tw the the. It's kind of neat. Um, sheep's wool will grow the longest in the first twenty four hours, um, so the most in the first twenty four hours. So. Within a day, they've got a nice uh, centimeter of wool um, already. So you gotta make sure in that first 24 hours that they don't get wet or uh, drafty because they can get uh, pneumonia, get cold, that kind of stuff. Cause you're taking a winter coat and you're taking it off. So you gotta be uh, um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then after that, they're fine. Then they go back out. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to, we're going to show you right from the whole process that we go through here. Um, and, uh, this is what you have to pull out of your sheep. <laughs> it's a tree. <laughs> um, tree. This is part of Marlene, Marley, um, the alpaca. Uh, we did Mo, uh, Moira's, uh, wool this morning. morning. Uh, this is Marley, you said? This is, uh, what's left of Marley. Yeah. If you look at all the brown wool that we have around here, that is one alpaca. That is Paula. So that we did that yesterday in yesterday's class, and the one to the left. So and this is drying, and yeah. then there's uh, we'll the lighting's not the best over in that area, but there's some more there. And then Moira's is, I believe it's this stuff here, right? Yeah, those three trays. On those the three trays. Yeah. On the so this is all drying here. So this is Moira's uh, stuff that was done uh, earlier today. We've got a fan over there that's blowing on our tower of wool. Can we hear with the fan? Um, yeah, no, I think. Okay. Let, let, me, let me know if the uh, the fan is bothering you. I don't think it's very loud. So uh, when they when they when our sheep guy Hans, he's such a sweetheart. Uh, when he comes and he does our does does when he does our uh, sheep and alpacas, what happens is when it hits the ground, you roll it up. So this is the inside. This would be against the body. 
So you wanna flip it over and then you wanna investigate to see what's in there. This is called skirting. So when you open it up and you check it out to see what, this is the condition that these guys came in. They were so overgrown. Um, you wanna look for any uh, poop that you can take off before you get it wet. Obviously dry poop's not uh, as bad as wet poop. Um, so skirting just means you're going through and you're just making sure if there's anything that you wanna cut off. Um, many of the time around the bum area of the sheet, um, you don't wanna, you know what, there's no point in playing with that part. We kind of get rid of it out there when we're actually doing the shearing. And, uh, and then it's just a little cleaner going in there. So skirting is when you take the edge, the part that is around the bum, the belly, the um, genitals, you take that off and uh, just play with the good part. This will all come out with different uh, um, techniques as we go through today. Oh, the goat spotters from Alberta just got on. Yeah. <laughs> Robin um, Jane. <laughs> while you're skirting, I suggest you go turn your water on hot and you're going to fill your container that you're going to use to wash it. So you would, while you're waiting for that to get off. Why is that wet here? Okay, wet. Ah, it's okay, we're washing it anyways. <laughs> 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 on my hands. Yeah, because like it's droplets, but I think it's just even more. Many, um, many people who do their own wool processing, a lot of people use Dawn dish soap. It's, uh, I did use that before uh, we kind of are going all natural, trying to go all natural. Um, so now I, just, I use Thieves. If any of you are into essential oils, you'll know what that is. Um, and it's a really good all natural uh, product, which I really like. And it worked. So we this first time I've done the sheep, uh, the wool with it, and it pulled the lanolin really nice too, which would be my concern with with changing from Dawn, is it's a grease cutter. So it would melt that lanolin. Uh, you're using as hot a water as you can to fill that container. Just enough with the amount, this is a, would be considered a small place compared to Paula. And uh, so I'll, I'll only fill it up about maybe four inches. Enough just that you can submerge um, the face into the water. Uh, we're just gonna get ooh, nice, generous. Do not, um, you don't want suds. Nice thing about thieves is there's no suds. Um, so it's, you're just using it and just let it naturally. You don't have to shake it up. You don't want bubbles. As soon as you start getting to, with bubbles and you're trying to get soap out of your, um, place. So even with Dawn, just let it sit in the water, give it a nice gentle stir. Uh, what else is there? That's about it. We'll let that fill. And okay. you're, you're skirting. So you're, yeah, picking out. <laughs> When this is Marley, and when Marley, Paula, and Shanzi, the three alpacas came in last year, um, they had never been sheared. So there, if you have ever watched our Facebook page and you see the picture of the three alpacas with the big butts at the fence, and uh, that those are the three that came in, and their fleece was really long, really thick, um, which is why we're finding trees in it uh well i think in paula's you found like a two foot piece of grass yeah yeah i did that on yesterday as well and uh pulled out this long piece of grass leaves and all should have eaten that yeah and i mean it's, a lot of people will go through fluff this up and pick this now and get all this stuff out but it's all it all comes out through different processes and it's a lot easier to work with it when it's uh you see these little things where it mats up around it, but as soon as you get it uh, in the water, like all oh, here, let me find an edge. See this? This is all this is all like matted. So trying to get that out of there is like impossible. But as soon as you get it wet, it's almost like the fibers release, and then you can pull it apart and work it, and then the dirt can release. There is no lanolin in 
alpaca wool, alpaca, alpaca fleece. We use the same process just to make sure it's clean and keep it clean, but it's more of a dirt. It's not, um, this dirt on the alpacas is not held in with lanolin. It, uh, the hot water, when you put a sheep fleece in there, heats up the lanolin and sheep wool is not dirty. The lanolin is what holds the dirt. So as soon as you heat it up and melt it, then it releases all the dirt, which is why it, then it comes out white instead of brown, right? Um, there's no lanolin in this. Um, it's more like our hair, um, the alpaca. So it just, it'll release and be more of a sand grit gravel than a liquid. I haven't gotten to that end. When you're, you'll get, end up with all these little pieces, this is what they call second cuts or off the top of the head. Um, because they'd have never been sheared, um, this is um, not as short, like it is fairly long and you can get some use out of it, but with this we would use more for felting. So we wash it as well. But when it comes out afterwards, after washing, we will separate it for felting instead of spinning because it's just short fiber. See, there's a, there's a dread. So in here is because when they get, they love the rain and they hang out in the rain. See as much, you can see this one. So in here, is it good? Yep. You can see that this is just dirt. Tiana, can you grab me a piece of white paper? This is a neat way you can see it. So it's it's like a dread, and it feels like it would be like a whole yucky, like piece of poop, but it's not. It's actually just dirt. When they stand out in the rain, the rain stays longer in the tips of their hair. So that's why it builds up on the tips of their hair. So if you separate it, you can see that all falling out. So by getting it wet, it'll fall out naturally and go to the bottom of the bin. But if it's real bad, that I'll throw out just because it's full of, but that'll all wash up. I just, that was neat just to see it on there. And it's just in the end, end of the dread is that's where, that's where the water sits. So there's some nice rocks. Oh. Okay, you got enough yet? There's How are we doing? But this is a very small piece. Coming along, yeah, it looks, uh, looks like it's getting close. <clears throat> this, uh, the tap works really well because you yes. can pull it right from. <laughs> uh, we do the same thing with, uh, we don't actually use the Craig uh, K cups. We just use it as a kettle essentially. Uh, and that will go and fill it up. Uh, and then, of course, we've got all of our uh, teas and coffees there as well. Okay. So we are going to grab, oh, that's too short. This is what you call a second cut. This is when your shearer uh, readjust or moves his blade and goes in a little deeper. Then you're getting the second cut. It's pretty much useless for everything. <laughs> all right. Grab our fleece. So as it goes in, it will float. Okay. A lot of people are scared to uh, process wool because they're afraid it's going to felt. This is extremely hot water. You want it hot. And then you're just going to push it down so it absorbs the water. You got to go. Uh, more. Ah, yeah. It's hot. It's hot. Um, you don't want to swoosh it. You want to just get it in the water. Poke down those holes. Um, I've never felt it. Like I've never done it too much that it felt. <laughs> Yeah, that's holding it to take too much air. You can see the air in there. 
Okay. So then you got half an hour, leave it in the hot water. I find that if you put a lid on it, it keeps it warmer. And then you wait half an hour. Is that half an hour? Yep. Um, because, because we're not going to sit and make you guys wait for half an hour while we enjoy family life. Um, <laughs> we're just going to jump to the next step because we've already done it. <laughs> um, we will come back to that in half an hour and show you what you would do um, instead of sitting here for two days. Um, 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 um. <laughs> That's going to be my word on TV, right? Um, uh, um. So once it comes out of there, then it goes over to here. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay, now I'm going to notice every time I say it. Yes, Tiana, you can bring an alpaca <laughs> over. Okay. <laughs> I think of a new word. Okay, so this is the stuff you had uh, washed earlier. This is Paula. And dried. We washed her place this morning. There is another rinse, and I'll show you that when we get there. But when you take it to put it on the drying racks, it'll come and it'll be all squished up in wet little balls because you've run the water out. And then when you bring it over here, you want to fluff it up. So that, I'm gonna grab the other one. Um, Whoops. Did it follow me? No, it didn't. It did it follow Don't you? Kick that with your toe. Honey. No, hang on a second. Technical <laughs> difficulties. Let me just push this in. And. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're good. <laughs> okay. Oh so once it comes out of. It's in a small ball, all soaked with water, in order to dry it quicker. And it takes probably a good two, three days with fans. Turn you your humidifier, your dehumidifier on, because the humidity goes up really fast in the house when you do this. Um, so you're just separating it so that the air can get in there to dry it. This is still, it's got some down. And then we did that this morning. Um, you want to make sure it's really dry before you put it away. So give it three days. Take a break. Give it three days uh, so that you're not putting it away uh, when it's uh, wet because then you'll end up with more. This is another time. Remember I said you will get, it will get cleaner and cleaner. So every time you pick and stretch it, and open it up, you get more stuff that falls out. So picking, which is what this is called, is what the fibers are being pulled and then the dirt is being released while you're doing this. So this is another step that just keeps it, make sure you got a good vacuum, don't do it over carpet. <laughs> Can imagine because you will end up with this all in your carpet. Uh, one of the ladies today who we had said she had gotten a fleece for free from a friend and uh, please if it ends up that you're working with your fleece and you have bugs that are coming out of it please throw it out go get a new one. I couldn't imagine what you would I have never ever seen a bug other than maybe a dead beetle that got trapped somewhere um, in a fleece. But if you've got live crawling things in there, find a new one. The, uh, you can see how long these fibers are. This is still down. Yeah, a lot of this will be. So these are the dreads that are the end that after washing, you can see have been released. And depending on how you pull, whenever you pull your wool, this is alpaca wool. When you pull your wool apart, you want to grab as far away as you can. The length of the fiber is usually where it is so that you're not fighting. If you pull here, you're fighting with it. But if you pull at the ends, it pulls with even finger pressure and it's not much. And all those little dreadlocks that we had will come out. Pull your sticks out. What's the weirdest thing we've ever found? 
plastic I had today in Paula's. I guess it depends on where they're. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of any. You can hear it. <laughs> when we do our sheep, the oats that fall out. Because when I throw oats in the, in the farmyard, and the sheep run underneath yeah. where I just threw the careful. oats. We have to be careful we throw oats and feed now yeah. outside. Because they save it for you to get rid of later when you're doing their, uh, yeah. their faces. So yeah, this is uh, this is picking number two, because we already picked this one when it was wet, which we'll show you at the very end too. And uh, this actually works really good to show you, because I can hear it, but you can't necessarily on the brown counter, right? And don't don't <laughs> zoom in. Is there any? There's there's nothing brown. <laughs> okay. So then, yeah, you'll go through, do it like this, put it back on the drying rack because you've opened it up even further. Uh, every day I'll try to go through. There's a lot this year. Uh, this, these ones just were done today. You can see how, this is how they come out. No, it's fine. The mix is still in there. I know. Yep. <laughs> it should oh, be in she's there. She's not leaving until we move her. This no. is the one that just came out today. So you can see how it, this is where, where you want to do your first pick. We haven't done the first pick yet. Well, they did, but they have first pick. Now, all those ends should come out. Now that was this was right. Uh, this is uh, Moira's this that is came Moira's, out. Moira's, which was yeah. another. Yeah. So the ends. If you have an older sheep, they're going to be more matted on the ends. That's a fiber. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, that's how long you'll pack in here. That's one lock. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, then this is second pick up here, so it's already been second pick. That is gonna like, kill me tomorrow trying to process all this. <laughs> Every once in a while, come over, feel it, put your fingers in. We have them on screens on the house screens, which you know you're gonna have to do your spring cleaning anyways, so you might as well use your screens and then clean them after, which is my kind of motto. It's actually, oh, that's wet. <laughs> so just come along, fluff it up, change it over, find the wet spots, pull it over. Oh, and then what Tiana is doing now from this pick, take it, wash it, pick it to put it on, which is this, and then you'll pick it to fluff it even more, go on the drying rack again, then we end up I know we're jumping back and forth to sheep. And then we end up with sheep. Like, like sheep. Yeah, we start with alpaca and we end we with sheep. We start up with alpaca <laughs> and then we end with sheep. Um, okay. Tiana, some of that's probably good enough to card, eh? Some of this? Yeah. Which I can, yeah. just because it keeps it the same for them. Okay. Yeah, well, we've done that. So now we move yeah. on to the carding process, right? Right. Yeah. So the more you pick, the I would say three picks. You're washing, picking to put it on the drying rack. Then you next day pick it again, put it back on the drying rack, and then the third day you can pick and put it on the carter. Some we're also doing it really old school. Like there's there's more carding machines out there. There's you know like when I say old school. This is how they traditionally used to card on paddles. We don't because this machine is beautiful. So yes, you only soak it once. There are times when you have done it twice though, hasn't it? When you soaked it twice? It, it depends on how dirty the fleece is. Oh, you're talking about there. Yeah, we'll go yeah. through. Once I take it out of there, we'll redo it. You just somebody had asked, do you yes. just do it once? But no. there has been times. No, we don't do it once ever. It's always twice. Oh, see, what do I know? Yeah. <laughs> That's why you guys are in frame. Yeah, yeah it's, it's twice. And then depending on how dirty the water is. Do it how three times. times. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Never once. You know why you're going to, and personal opinion, right? We all have different ways we do it. And we're learning still. But when you do the first one, and then when you go back, you're still draining like dirty water. So you might as well rinse it and get it out. 
right? Um, soaking it the exact same thing we just did, but again, take it out, bring out the water, dump your water and redo that again. This is the first time yesterday and today that, um, that Paula, the alpaca, was not overly dirty. Mm -hmm. It just needed rinsing. So I didn't soak it again. I just rinsed it in really hot water and then uh, picked it and put it, or put, it, put it out. So for, it, it all really truly depends on how dirty your wool or fleece is. Alpaca, there's not as many oils, but the sheep, you want to do twice. This goes over there. Do you want to go on there a second? This is all carded and ready for Tiana to spin. This is what you call a bat. So I'll show you on here where I'm going to get started. Do you want to come over uh, here? Yes, more? probably. Oh, put your head, Toby. I know all the animals are really great. Yeah. Here. Like right here. What are you doing, Mom? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> She's still in there. Uh, Next one. Don't want to move that so you're not hurting your foot. I guess I could have kicked it aside. <laughs> oh, too bad we're not doing berry. No. <laughs> okay. Typically, this is what you call a carding machine. Typically. You load it here and you wind. And as this grabs the wool and pulls it through, this one's going the opposite direction and stretches and lines up. Can you see how that the lines yeah. up? Yeah. It lines up all the fibers, which is much easier. Then these, because these take a lot of arm work. This one, not so much. You can have your coffee in one hand, you know, and just keep going. I don't really think you can hold a coffee as you're putting yeah. that on. And oh, we it. could. You can, <laughs> you can take, take a coffee break. So <laughs> typically, this is how you would load it in here. I've been using it now quite a while and quite a bit. Uh, I find... I like to do the overhand where you're just letting it grab. You can feel which uh, fibers are pulling and you can adjust that. The nice thing about this, doing it this way, is you can also keep an eye on it for sticks. Then you throw them on the ground and vacuum later. <laughs> This part is lining up and combing the same as you would comb your hair. It's combing the fibers all the same way. If you look in, you can see how much more dirt is released at this step. Okay. That's going to speed up. <laughs> So I like this because you can feel it. If it needs to be pulled, if it needs to be straightened. I can't feel it in here. And you're kind of just wishing, you know, like hoping it goes straight. If you end up with, see that piece of straw there? If you do end up with a piece of straw in there, I just take a, and it's gone. This is my, this is my pet peeve. I need like a sticky thing or a vacuum that's constantly on. <laughs> because they stick to you and alpaca is much more staticky than uh, than wool than sheep so if you this way you can also see the little tufts remember over there I showed you the little tufts that uh, are too short this really uh, just allows you to yeah, it's more hands on See that one? So, oh, I thought it was a. Some of them will be caught on this piece here as it goes around a second time. So we're going to comb out that. 
What did we miss that over there, Tiani? I think we kind of missed that. Tuft. Out. Very, very time consuming. Yes. This is what I watch TV while they're watching TV. Or how many fleeces did we get this year? Uh, Marley, Paula, Shannon, Barry. Okay, so that's four. Lambert, Turbo, Tinker, Turbo. Tink, seven. Moira, eight. Annie didn't have one. No. Uh, eight. Yeah. Well, and then we got one from someone else. No, it's coming, not yet. So oh, it's, oh, I've got cat. Yeah, it's coming, not yet. Yeah, we had, we spent, uh, when we do our sheep shearing, Hans, I love Hans. He's such a nice guy. Uh, he does up to 10 sheep. Uh, so we have a friend that brings her sheep here to get done. So, and she hasn't started processing yet. So. And then Paula, Marley, Shannon, and Barry, no, not Barry, Paula, Shannon, and Marley, their fleeces would have been about two and a half fleeces of a normal alpaca yeah, because they bags, were so overgrown. These two bags are Marley and typically an alpaca should have less than a sheep from they grow a lot slower. Yeah. So you normally shear alpaca every two years. Yeah. Well, nor a lot of people do it every year. But Depending said, on how long they want the fibers. Yeah. We said we're going to do it. Every so uh, they're asking if we're going to finish them all <laughs> this <the> winter. <laughs> so she's been at it. Um, she's been at it quite a bit uh, over the last, <laughs> oh, well, over holidays. You know, she's here. She's all set up. Yep. Uh, she's got the TV over there, and she's watching her program, it's, and uh, away good, she goes. It's, it's good exercise for winter. So yeah, of the <laughs> how, many, how many did we say? Seven? Eight. Eight. So uh, of alpaca, that would be four alpaca, and I guess yeah, four, four sheep. Yeah, four alpaca, four yeah. sheep. But then like Moira's this little thing, and the alpacas were massive. So typically, when we get a rescue in here, they're huge. Like they, they, not, none of them have been sheared when they've come in. No. Yeah. Usually not. So I mean, those places are they're they're huge. Um, it would probably take. I just do it when I'm not doing anything. But it would probably take me a week a fleece. Like when you when you think and see the price of yarn, wool, like real wool. You understand what goes into it by seeing these, like, by watching this. It took me one day to wash and pick and dr start drying one fleece. So when it comes to, like, you get a lot of people, the price of wool is high, but it's worth it. When you're, when you're supporting the, the, the little Farmers and the what hand done, done, not the industrial. Hand done. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the industrial done wool and yarn and stuff like that because a lot of the fibers are ripped and pulled apart. Whereas during this process, it's more the person who does it can feel the fibers ripping and stuff like that. So you can, yeah, you can, you can see how it. So uh, somebody about asked about uh, selling it. Is it worth it uh, doing doing this and selling it? Um, <clears throat> it's natural product. You've got you've done it yourself, knowing that yeah. you've done it. The I gotta keep going so we get to the right point. Um, <laughs> is it worth it? Out here, there's local people that charge for spun wool, like for semi hand done. It's not in home. It's small factory uh, out here, and it's all their own personal sheep. It looks like the average price is. 200 grams of wool for $25. I have never weighed these like this. This, the, once it's spun and becomes yarn, then it's 200 grams for $25. Now, the little packs on the fridge of the fleece for felting, which is also popular, because one lady today, so she's like, you're going to kill me if you put that all in the yarn because she's a filter, right? So she wants it like this. Um, she pays uh, $30 for 
for a pound like this. So I don't know what that looks like. I've never weighed it. Um, for us here, because the animals have stories and they have their own little personalities and this is Marley. When, if I made you, if I can end up making some Marley mitts or a Marley hat, you know, Marley socks, then, and you know that you're supporting a nonprofit and that what you pay for the wool of Marley is going back to Marley, then that makes a difference, we find. Like there's a lot of people that will personally request something made of fairy wool, you know? Or but you money. haven't made any yet. I haven't made any yet yeah. because my daughter's the only one that knows how to spin so far. <laughs> I, I am not as coordinated as she is with the spinning wheels. You just haven't actually really tried. No, it's... See, I can't even do it when I'm standing up. <laughs> You go like see, this. Just rub your belly and pat your head. No, I. Yeah. Oh no! Wait. Okay. See, I can't. I feel like I. I wasn't jerk. able. I didn't. I wasn't able to do this before, though. Um. <laughs> that spinning. You need. It takes talent. It so takes. I wasn't able to do that before. I actually didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Right. So once I've done the spinning, I got used to that. Now you know why I say that. Okay, we'll just finish this, and then I'll show you how to take it off. Woo. So is it worth it? Bottom line. It is if you're in it for the personal reasons. Because we make all our gifts. We make things that go back and raise money for the animals. Um, it's fantastic to teach the kids and pass on and keep alive a lot of the old, old ways. Uh, many, of our, many of our spinning wheels have come from people who just wanted them to be kept alive, passed on. So in that sense, it's well worth it. Cash wise, <laughs> now there's way too much work. <laughs> you know, if, if you, oh gosh, I wouldn't even know what to. We suck at pricing things. My, my, like, I mean, when you talk about hours put in, the heart, like it's, and it's not, it's not Are you taking that off? Yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's not little labor. It's back-breaking labor. Okay, I'll come over here. Okay. Uh, I just use a, a needle. And there is a line. Yeah. So So it's a seam on where break. the leather is put on the drum. Yeah. So fibers. You're just pulling up on it to kind of let it break itself. Uh don't cut it. I know it's tempting and you really don't want to fight with it all the time, but no, because this is what's going to go into your spinning wheel and you want the longer fibers and uneven. You want as long as fibers as you can get. Yeah. There is such a thing. Um, this is called a bat that we're pulling off, but many uh, knitters, spinners, felters, I don't even know what we call us. What, are we, what did somebody say today? Um, um, fa uh, fabric artist, uh, fiber artist. Fiber, yeah, fiber artist. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you, you can. I can show you another. I'll set this up while we're while Tiana's. I'll set it up again while Tiana is doing the spinning, because she's better at it than me. <laughs> and I'll show you the other one because you can actually take it right off of here, in a roving. Getting an electric, an e-spinner. Yeah. Um, well, connecting. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> let's just change cameras again. Um, okay. Uh, well, no, that's the technical difficulty. Yes. I guess you have those. Is it on? Yeah, it's okay. we're going. Was there a comment that you lost there? <laughs> no. Have you thought about getting electric? An electric spinner. Oh, okay. Electric would be nice if we were doing it for like long-term production and taking in other places. And I, we don't have enough to go like, this is nice. This is relaxing. Like, yeah, it's hard work, but when like you're watching a movie and you're, you're making wool, 
And that's cool because I'm like, I have to always be doing something. So it's okay. The only thing I wouldn't mind in electric <laughs> is. What are you stuck? Don't say No, that. I got stuck to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I guess it's not electric. It's just, it's, a, it's another machine like this that takes this kind of carding to this level. There's a picker. And I've got the plans to make it. And it's a wooden box with, on the bottom of the box, the nails go this way. And on the top of the box, the nails. This is the bottom of the box. And the top of the box, the nails go the opposite direction. And then when you move the lid to the box, it picks your wool. And then you stir it up and you move it and it picks it again. So, but again, it's relaxing to stand around and pick wool. Somebody asked if you can make a wig out of that. Well, I <laughs> suppose you could. <laughs> you it probably, probably could. wouldn't look very natural. Oh, but it, really? Actually. It looks like one of those old, like, uh, um, oh my the hats. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, I just got wool. Yeah, now you got wool all over. <laughs> so, uh, so just checking in with Nix here. Yeah, um, Nix has been in here <laughs> since we started. Uh, she's uh, KO'd. <laughs> Once you're, uh, we just did this because it was filled. So I'm, just, I, if I knew for sure it was dry, I would put it in the plastic bag. Hey, you're putting wool everywhere. Um, but this was Paula, so I'm just gonna leave it on top because it could. Okay. Be with so thing. you're gonna start spinning. Uh, uh, what breed of sheep do we have? We have Canadian Arcot sheep, which is a blend of Suffolk, Suffolk and. and Suffolk and. There's a few of them. Uh, they were basically bred and crossbred for uh, sheep or wool purposes. Best for meat and wool. Yeah. They're, so they're a dual, a dual type. Okay. Do you want me to do Marley? Because that's another alpaca. And you've been doing the alpaca? Yeah. Game? Yeah. Well, yeah, your choice. Actually, if you Google Canadian Arcot and you go to the Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia um, you will actually see a picture of Lambert uh, that's uh, beside the pond grazing on the grass. Yeah. So now this is where Tiana takes over. Okay, so the timing I've got is 43 minutes in, so we should be pretty close on... Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So I guess what we'll do is we'll go through the uh, spinning process, and then we can come back uh, to the... Um, this will be worth to pull that out and rinse it. What? Oh, you're gonna. <laughs> I said this will be worth a laugh. To don't these guys. don't go too fast on that one because when you pick up speed and you're not at a relative rhythm, the whole thing pops off. Okay. It's like the whole string. Well, Tiana's setting up her wool. I'm going to. Uh... You're so... going to attempt. Too soon. <laughs> Oh my God, I just realized something, Tiana. What? I think I've just mastered it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what did you realize? OMG. What? Did, yeah. Doesn't and, matter, and, bro. I've, I've mastered <laughs> it. Do you know why? Why? It just dawned on me. Look down here, Mark. That is cool. I never realized because I've never worn shoes. Oh, yeah. when I've done it, she's got her indoor shoes. I've on. got my indoor shoes on. Wow, I've been trying to master this for so long. Yeah, you got to rock your ankle. Watch. Yeah, Tiana's shaking her head, going, "Yes, I know." She's like, "Keep going backwards." <laughs> Oh yeah. And okay. rock it back. Move your foot, Tana. There's she no back plate on that one. It. Yeah, she does. Well, I don't really one. this is my spinning wheel. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Well, to and it. wearing shoes, I guess helps this, out. This is my spinning wheel, so you're welcome to that. Okay, one. so we are starting with 
a thread that's uh, already on it. There goes the timer. Yeah. So, so this is called like your leader yarn or whatever like that. So this is used for uh, helping you to put it on. So what you want is you want something that's really fuzzy and kind of rough so that the fibers can grab onto each other. So you can see right here, I've already got some sheath that's still left on there from previous. Okay, so when it goes through, there's a hole that goes yeah. in here. So it goes, uh, when you're first putting it on, you go through this way and you pull it through. And then you go in this side and you pull it out here. So it comes out. And this little spot right here is where you get your twist. Because there's multiple pieces that go in different ways that spin. And that's how you get your twist. So I'm going to grab part of a piece yeah. right here. When we first got our spinning wheels, you have to figure out how to put on the sinew. The sinew. Well, we use sinew. Art. They came with some twine or whatever, but if you once you've discovered sinew, it's like awesome. So, how many windings of yarn would we get off one sheet? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll show you. We'll Do we show know you that? that? Do we actually know that yet? I can show. I'll show it, you. It depends on your thickness. Um, that's kind of what it mostly depends on. Well, and we do have some. Yeah, once we'll we get through this, back. we've got some that's uh, there, that we've wound. It, it wasn't tight. Right. So we'll get a better idea on that in a bit. It's because you're going old school. You got you to fix it. Yeah, this happens every mm -hmm. once in a while. So this is sinew uh, that goes... There's two yeah, loops. So it's, 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 it's one full kind of like a double, like a figure eight. Like figure eight. Uh, and so they both go on here. On the wheel. And then they and both, then goes one on goes on here. each one of those. You probably let, it, let her explain that. Case. And this goes on there. And this was just loose, so it popped off. And then so you put these whoop, back on here. And then you put your fingers on them. Eh, and then you go over here and you hold it and you spin it. So easy. And once in a while it yeah. it flies off like right? a chain on a bicycle. <laughs> right? Yes. That's yeah, good. Listen to your grandma swearing in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. She really was. <laughs> Okay, so you've got your. You've got to get it started. It's. Every machine has its own little right. pickup that you yep. have to have to get past, and then it's once you get going. This big lump right here yeah. was stuck in there. And this one, you actually need so. some string or something. To get to yeah, so over. then you adjust these ones, I guess, uh, as you're going, right? Yeah. So you have to move these over and back and forth just to fill this up. Can you lick it to get it through the hole? What? No, you can't. Why are you? Don't. Really? <laughs> you... Isn't that what you do? You lick no. the thread? <laughs> you lick the thread, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you use the little picker that she has, the tool. Now it won't really grab. Because it's... Yeah, it's wet. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll focus on Tiana here. Okay. So, you've yeah, you have put the, uh, the wool onto that leader. And you kind of just want to pinch it, and that'll keep the twist on one side, oh, and it'll keep it together. You don't want to get your twist on this side, because that'll start wrecking it, and you won't be able to pull it apart and get the thickness of yarn that you want. So you just keep going, and then you're using this hand just to pull it back. She makes it look so easy. Yeah, so as this is spinning around, uh, it's actually twisting it. Uh, so the twist stays in this area between here and her fingers. And it's twisting it two different ways because these two pieces right here are twisting in different ways because of the figure eight. And that's moving this piece and the bobbin in two different ways. Because mm. this is the bobbin one. Really? Wait, this is the bobbin one. And this is the winder, which is this with all the hooks. Yeah, and one's bigger than the other. One so spins. you're going to get uh, a faster spin mm -hmm. on one and than the other. There's different bobbins you can yeah. get to get different speeds. And then, yeah, 
you just, just add a new one and you hold it for a little bit seconds and then you just go you just go so easy <laughs> lots of practice yeah <laughs> when we first started we had the chunky wine yeah Call craft yarn wine. yarn yeah so i I know. I need once. That. Once you're used to it yeah. going so thin, you're, it's yeah. hard to go thicker. So I'll slowly make. I it need thicker. her to go thicker so that I can make chunkier yarn. There, do you want that or bigger? Yeah. You want it like that? Yeah, that's good. When we put the three of them or two or three of them together, I need it to be chunky yarn, like nice yarn, like thick yarn. So practice. Practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. There was a few ladies that couldn't believe she could spin like that. And she's only been doing it a year and a half. <laughs> so Cindy's asking, how do you get the two and three ply? You just run it right back through, I'll show right? you. Uh, okay, so we'll get to that. I gotta show, <laughs> I'm going to show them there first. I'm going to yeah. show them the wool. Okay. The three ply, I can show right here. Yeah, but don't you have to rerun it? Nope. No. No. Oh. Like, I can't do it, but I can show you how it's done. I'll show yeah. them on there. Okay. Okay. On what? On the yarn because I can pull three pieces or two pieces. No, you don't pull two different pieces. You pull, you can do it. There's multiple ways you can do it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so you asked about how much uh, a sheep produces. So this was first year for Turbo. So this is his one year old uh, fleece right there, and then uh, Tink and Lambert. Okay. Um, you can see how she kind of got better and better as she's done it and how she can maintain different lengths or different thicknesses. I like the thicker stuff just because when you're doing like, you know, mitts or blankets and that kind of stuff, um, it just gives it more meat. So what? then there's one that's lace weight. The one on the end. The yeah. This is ridiculous. That's yeah. lace weight. Like might need your bifocals people. This is her. It is. Oh or my God. How do you give it? From one to the other. <laughs> well, right? Yeah, like, well, then this is two ply, right? No, that's three ply. That's three. It's considered three ply, but it's actually only one piece of yarn, which is weird. Because what happens is when you have. Is it, can you show it on here? Would, would it work? So you can't really, but so they'd have. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. That'll work. Okay, so, hang on. Wait, no, I got it. So they do this, they have a loop. So what they do is on the machine, Make it they it take more. Yeah. Okay. They're doing something. If, if some of you may know the fishing, so like when you, a, a boat knot, when you're tying a boat and knot. So on the spinning wheel, they tie this onto the bobbin. And then these pieces would go through the spinner on the end where you would put in the unfinished wool. Yeah. And then so you'd go to an extra length. And it would spin and all then you'd these spin together. This, and then okay. when you get to the end, move your fingers. When you get to the end, they do another one and they keep going and it would be a three ply. Okay. Neat. It's neat. That's one way. That's the way we were shown. <laughs> I know they're a little weird on there. They got to come off if they're going to do. Okay. We'll get to how we uh, spun these, uh, we wound these yeah. in a, in a moment. So that's what it looks like. So when, when I tell her she, I need her to go thicker, <laughs> I, I'm not getting this out of this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting this. Well, it, this. It's, it's, it's lace weight. It's, it's lace thread. Weight. I'm a knitter, <laughs> man. I need thick knit. So, and then this is alpaca that uh, we were given to process, and this is where it's at. It takes time. Uh, Benny, I think. Yeah. So not one of our alpacas. Not one of ours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can show them these. What's that? Oh, yeah. So these uh, somebody did today, uh, brought today. Uh, so there's Levi. And there's the uh, the three horses on the other side nice of the and pond. Yeah. And that is, that's tink, that's tink. Tinker. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, I know what that be. Tink. And Turbo had orange. Shadow. Yeah. I think that's and Lambert. I'm, I can't yeah, remember what sure, photo it was, but. I'm not sure who that one is. Yeah, this is cute. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, Snow. Snow. And, uh, Chance. No, that would be. Petunia, wouldn't it? No, that's Chance. Chance. Oh, that's Chance. Petunia. Uh, one of those balls is twenty-five bucks. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's I guess balls. we'd have to. I guess we'd have to weigh it right? to figure and out. This is where we're, we're <clears throat> learning, right? So can we grab one and weigh it up yeah. and see what it? Uh... 
it's different. See, this is thicker. This actually would be a good one, right? Because it's actual wool. It's because it's thicker. It takes up less. So you get a bigger ball, but it doesn't weigh as much because this is thick. Right? That would be a small ball. 2.3. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. So that's, so that's the one. Uh, 2.3 ounces. Yeah. So, crap. So, yeah. Okay. 25 so. bucks for 200 grams. Well, okay. So, you were going grams. I don't know what it's on. Uh, so, that's 64 grams. You might want to take a bite. 64. That's only 64 grams? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then if you pass me one behind you, Dad. Oh, Mom's going to grab it. Take it over there was more like oh. 150 grams. So, there you go. 25 bucks. 240. Well, yeah, close. <laughs> 200 is 25 bucks. 200 grams. 200 is 25. 200 okay. grams is 25 bucks. Average price around here. 30 if it's alpaca, but I figured I'd just do 25 bucks for 200 yeah, so grams. This is 212. If anybody was at well, yeah. 212. Okay. 214. All right. So once we've spun it, we are winding it. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she's moving. She's just, not getting out. She's, she's just, just rearranging. She high. Yeah, <laughs> she's high on lamb. She line. looks totally high. It's catnip. Oh, you're a silly one, aren't you? It's catnip. <laughs> okay, so the winder. Yeah. We actually should have left this on, Tiana. This is your skein, skein, uh, or yard winder. Uh, multiple names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> When Tiana's over there at her spinning wheel, <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. Oh, when she's full <laughs> and she wants to empty it, then I come over here and we hook it up to this and we put it on here. So what this does, when it's on there, there's and the twist, it is such a yeah. Okay, so you'll see it twists back on itself because of the twist that's been put on it from the spinning wheel, it wants to do this. So what this does is it stretches it out, not stretch it, but line it up. <clears throat> and on here, if you find that you're really, um, spinny and it's freaking out you can actually steam this and it'll release the spin make sense so if you steam it it no longer wants to spin back on itself um, you can also adjust this so if you want to steam it and then push it up a little it'll stretch it and let it settle in itself and then from there once it's settled, it'll go to the winder. You wouldn't want to wind it right from there to there. I don't want to think so because it would totally back twist on itself. I haven't tried it, but you want to you try don't, this? Yeah. <coughs> well, here, you want me to? <laughs> go to the neighbors. No. <laughs> so when we have it in the ball of yarn, if, so we just got this for Christmas. Tiana yeah, got this for Christmas. You'll see how straight this is on the ground, right? It's not twisting like this. Here, come over here because that's actually a neat. We've never done this before, but it's neat to show you. Oh, the end. Yeah, because that's actually that is a huge difference when you see that side by side. Look. So if I put that one down and drop it to the ground, it's got all these twists that are happening. So, Whereas, how, so how long does it need to stay on there? If, well, if you don't have, I left it on here. I didn't steam it. I left it on here probably a week each one. And then when she's full, I'll fill this and then take it off. If these things are ridiculously priced, they are expensive. Um, 
what we did and the yarn that's on here that is now straight and not all freaked out was I roll it in ball. I rolled it in balls, tight balls to stretch it. Because somebody I'm just somebody just commented that they're going to have to watch it later. You can actually scroll back in the live stream uh, up to two hours. I've only been on an hour now, and you can actually start watching it from the beginning uh, if you don't mind it not being live and you don't have any questions that you want to ask. She can still ask questions. Though. Yeah, but not when not. she's oh. watching. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, you can still ask questions back then because we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this Christmas, Tiana. <laughs> Got. Tiana got. <laughs> we're we're a team. <laughs> You're gonna inherit everything one day, anyways. We got a barn, a barn, yarn winder. Uh, we had them all in. Yeah, we had them all in just balls. <laughs> yeah, and they make awesome decor, but. They're not really good when you're trying to sit down and knit. So this looks better. It's more professional. And if somebody wanted that yarn, then that's a more professional way to sell it. Right? Yes. So it turns on two different axes. Axis. 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 Yeah. Um, so this one goes around. As that goes, uh, the center pin stays where it is, but then this rotates around on it. So as it spins one way, it actually also spins the other way. And they are fairly, very, very uh, And it's just called a yarn winder. Right? Like a gyroscope, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So then as it spins around, you get that uh, pattern. Uh, do you have just the ball that we had before? You've still got one or two, don't you? No. <laughs> oh, you, you wound them all? Wound you were them. so excited. Wound them all. Yeah, I wound them all. Yeah, so we just had them Wait. in, uh, we just had them in a ball. We just have yarn everywhere in random places. Just saying. <laughs> and those are feltings, right? Yeah. So these are what you they would call dryer dryer balls. And these are actually extremely easy to make. So over there. I like my kitchen better than it feels dark over there. Okay. These are actually really easy to make. Oh. This is picked. That is not. Oh. And you do a really good vacuum after. This is all this has all come out of there. And there's more to come. Okay. This one I picked up with the forks because it's absolutely adorable. This is a sheep with feet. <laughs> this is just random. And um, so these are dryer balls. If you're into essential oils or all natural, then you can uh, make these. And I'll, I'll explain how to make them. Paw print. Hat toy. These are my dryer balls. These were when I first started. I'm like, oh, I can make dryer balls and just throw them together. Um, and they do get better and better as you get better and better at it. That's all I have left for a ball. Oh, I, yeah. I knew there was one in there. <laughs> These are really neat. It's neat though because they're cute. There's awesome decor. Like I like them. So, uh, felting, felting, dryer balls, dryer balls. Uh, I have my little. There are felting tools that you can get uh, with some. This is something she wished she got a day. Those are needles on there. Okay. And they're ser ser serrated. Serrated. Okay. Um, needles. Can you zoom in and see that? Well, you, know? you can see you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> they're serrated like fishing hooks. Or no, a lot less than fishing hooks. Just it's almost like somebody took a knife and like just gouged the sides. So yeah. You can feel the little edge. Um, because it's fibers, when you um, poke it in, everybody quiet. You can hear it. 
And what it's doing is it's poking the fibers and making the fibers re-grab themselves in there. Almost as if you're spinning, but you're putting it into a ball with a needle instead of the looping that the spinning wheel does. So yeah. the colored samples on the fridge. So yeah. we went over that a little bit uh, earlier and Tara's actually going to grab one here. We dyed with uh, food coloring, just basic food coloring. Where's my sheep? Do we need some grass? Yeah, put some. Yeah. <laughs> He's really good. Okay. So I don't know. What am I going to put on it? I didn't think that one helped, did I? Put a little heart in the middle of the paw. Okay. Watch fingers. These things are deadly. Don't do it, Swartz. Well, it just pushes it into the white. And it just creates the fibers grabbing each other in there. And this is where you get a lot of your pattern stuff that the filters are making. So this is a single one. This is a multiple one. I don't like this. This seems more fun, like more. <laughs> more fun. Well, you can feel it. It's yeah. satisfying, right? And it's stuck on there. Like you're not like there's no. And then you just shape it as you're putting it in yeah. to get whatever design design that you want. I'm gonna put another little eye. Might as well. Right here. So and that's what's happened here. Yeah. Uh, so you've taken uh, bits of brown and just pushed it in and formed it into a paw. <laughs> now, do you have nylon, Tana? Great stress relief, yeah. Nylon. <laughs> Nylons. I guess it oh, would work I... for uh, for stress relief they as would. well. <laughs> this works for stress relief. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Just, yeah, don't stab yourself or you're going to have anger issues. Well, and we had put on works. some classes where people started well, like, using them and they snapped. Yeah. They snapped a lot of them off. You have to make sure that you are going straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out. As soon as you get carried away, and that's when the needles snap. Uh, always have band-aids available. There are different ways you can felt. Um, Will the food coloring fade? Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, and if you're using them in your dryer, don't go out and get no fancy ones. Just, I'll show you. Tana's gone to grab it. In your dryer, all you need is wool so you can put your essential oils on them. Don't sit there and go buy like a, $20 one. They're fun. They're cute, but they are not going to last looking like that. So yeah, dryer balls, they're supposed to take static out, is they it? They don't. Don't fall for that. Um, okay, what's their purpose? Their purpose is because people are trying to go all natural and it makes a lot of money for, in my opinion, it makes a lot of people for money because people are buying money for people. <laughs> Anything that you put in your dryer that can go between the clothes is helpful. It doesn't matter if it's wool, plastic, toy, a lighter. You know, well, don't do a lighter. That's a dryer. <laughs> I'm just saying, because that's what sometimes I pull. Uh, so this is how they're made. This is the stocking, right? Yeah. This okay, is so stocking. this is how the ball portion is made. So if you want dryer balls for your clothes and you want to use them, take a pair of nylons, cut the legs off. Oh, I don't use them. Well, I can't use it now, so what's the purpose <laughs> of me keeping it? <laughs> yeah, take and put that back you in your room. one leg. Okay, right. well, you get to keep this leg, too. <laughs> Roll up your nylons. It almost feels like a... Put it on my... No. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, anything that you... If you have old... Um, <clears throat> if you have old yarn, the end remnants or whatnot at home, Take that yarn and roll it up into a ball, and then take the the um, nylon. That's it. No, take no, take this wool and wrap it around it. So, if you wanted to hand felt your own, you could take this and spend hours doing this, or I think I need more size. Um, what happened in the reason some of these are smaller is because I didn't weigh it and make sure it was the right amount. Okay. okay. This is a dryer ball. 
take it, shove it in the end of the nylon. Tighten it up. Michael, we're going to use that. What? Michael, we're going to use that if you do that. You don't cut it. I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to make a whole bunch as well. Oh, you yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can kind of daisy chain them. Yeah, daisy chain them. All right. So then you tie that in the knot, make another one, then make another one, and sew your nylon. Cut the, well, I don't know what would happen if you put them all at the same time. So you probably want them to roll around. I you want think. to throw these in your wash for at least three loads. Three or four loads, it's all going to be with the nylon on. Throw it in your wash. And then what will happen is it will all felt and the nylon will stick to it. Cut the nylon, tear the nut, like take the nylon off, and you're left with dryer balls. Okay. These are, the reason these have gone slightly crooked as well is because they're not solid. This is so, like, there's a lot of wool in these. Yeah, like this is. Yeah, it's solid. You, um, can, you can barely squish that. But so the this more one, you put, like this one will probably end up more I flat. I can squish flat. <laughs> it probably will end up more flat. Um, yeah. But because it's not solid, it's not, it's not packed. The harder you pack it. The, the better. Well, it's just going to hold The more solid, warm, yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, and then. Where's if you are doing patterns yeah. and you're worried about your dye dye, dye fading, um, pick black black wool. Um, yeah, so you want to do full loads, three washes, three dries. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like just through with the laundry. Yeah, with yeah, the laundry. You want to dry it out. Yeah. And uh, what'll happen is then it'll felt itself. Yeah, and they could be pin cushions too. Yeah, pin cushion. Yeah. And then this one is the cat toy. Yeah. So all you, do, all you would do is the exact same thing as that, um, or the other one, but you just put a ball in the middle of it. So it has yeah. a little, yeah. Yeah. And then when you use it in your dryer, you just pour, put your essential oils on there. Right. This one was made around um, a ball. Actually, not that, so it felt to it. I bet you if you took a tennis, like it was made around another ball, but not wool. Um, and then cut off. So that's why it has the, the layers. So they first layered it with one color. And then they, and that's just a matter of taking a ball of any type. You can take a tennis ball, you can take, and you just start at one end and just start wrapping it around your ball. And then when you wash it, it will felt. Felt to itself and not the ball. Right. Yeah. Be, and then when you cut, you can cut it off um, and then cut it open and, and make a... And then within, Kate, you know what? You just, you just stop. I want, I want this. Yeah. Okay. So when you are felting within the hair, you'll find these tiny little curls. And they'll also, also use that for like hair and stuff in different felting stuff. If you're making felted animals. Yeah. Then those work really good for yeah. like hair loss. And you'll find different hair lengths and different types of curls and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I think the only, the like last this. thing is just yeah. uh, finishing off the wool here that we put in. <clears throat> is the bottom soaking wet from the humidity? Uh, yeah, it's wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, all right. I'm on your side. Sheldon's doing great, Quentin. <laughs> Hi, Quinn. Okay. So again, it's still warm. Still. Now, what we want to do is you want to take it from the edge, and you want to pick up a little, and you want to squeeze it, and you want to throw it in the sink. You want to, don't pull the whole thing. Or else. No, I know. This is why my back is just like done. And squeeze it. Ow, there's a stick again. This is like, and again, you're picking. Because, yeah. Listen, <laughs> like it's a full blown stick. 
<laughs> and then in there. I, I look at this and I'm like, oh my god, I'm not even gonna be able to stop after these videos this done. This is still dry. I gotta. No, it's you pulled it. They, it's because they dry. It's yeah, yeah. And the sink is just to hold it because what I will do is I will run my hot water. If it was cheap, I would put it through another big hot bath with more deep soap uh, and let it sit to pull more of the lanolin out. But because this is alpaca, basically this is like, it's our hair. You, you really, you just want to wash it. Yeah, see, look. <laughs> That's for later. <laughs> That's fully intact. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Money. I've never found anything other than I, mean, I couldn't believe that lady today when she said how many bugs she found in the mm. she had. Dude. So you've got the other bin. So the bin on the bottom would normally be used for just the hot water rinse afterwards. Is that it? No, it's 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 used now because I'm getting older. Well, that too. And it raises it up off the ground. Uh, but for sheep, so if you're doing sheep, you what do you do? Throw it all in the sink and then transfer it back over. If we're doing a lot and we have like, then I would fill I would fill the other one while we're doing this, and we'd be throwing it in the other hot water bath. But because my back is killing me lately, and we realize it's just like, no, I hit the side of the bucket. Um, <laughs> I'm just using. I'm, I would set up two side by side if we had a lot of people coming to class. Because I'm doing it by myself, I'm doing it slower. So I don't have enough hands to do this without killing my back before midnight, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so what I'm doing here, to, uh, yes, normally I would have another big bin the same size and I would transfer it to that one. But I would still be pulling it up and squeezing it because when you pick it up and you squeeze it, you're, you're leaving behind dirt, right? But if you take this and dry, squeeze it in your water, you're just taking the dirt with you, right? So leave it in there. And then when I put it in here, you want to come behind me here, Mark. I'm going to put my butt right in there. So clean sink. And if you put it in here and you just lightly, lightly move it around you can see that the dirt is really not coming off of it if it's not dirt it's there's so pick it up there's a little bit you see alpaca is not as dirty as uh sheep sheep yeah you know it doesn't hold it so now all that's in there is like twigs and sticks yeah. and hay and oats and oats and grains and all so those. then this after i do all this um i'll take it over here and this will be your first pick when you take it out of here. And now you're just, you're like, your first pick is just like, oh my God, okay, we're not soaking wet. And then we're just going to dump it on the tray so it can dry. I, I hit it. Cat's not in there anymore. Nope. <laughs> no, she's on the floor behind you. Right. <laughs> Next. And then this is where, this is the first pick where it goes on here. This is Mark. This is Paula. Wait. Mom said it was Marley. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a small chunk of Marley. We know it's Marley <coughs> because of the white. Yeah. Paula doesn't have any white. So this will have to go on a different. She has a small spot on her head. Okay. Does she, oh, so then it might be her. No, she doesn't. I don't know. But have to look. I think she has a small spot on her head. Okay. So yeah, and then, you know, if your water does happen to get dirty at this stage, then you just move that over here one. Okay. So I think that's that's, cool. I that's pretty much it then. I don't think we missed anything. Drying process, it usually takes, what do we say, two to three days uh yeah, over make there. Make sure it's dry. <clears throat> you know, don't mess with it. Don't it'll when give you're, you a break. When you're drying it, you can see there's the one fan over there, and then we've got another fan. It's quite loud if it's sitting on the counter, we'll uh, blowing time. over. Um, we have uh, our controls, our thermostat, and our HRV, our heat recovered ventilator. Uh, so, of course, it's dry outside. Uh, and we are doing air circulation because the humidity does climb. Uh, now, it might be a good idea to even have a dehumidifier because you want to yeah, keep that humidity down in the house. 
<clears throat> okay, well, I think that's about it. Uh, if there's not any other questions, uh, if there is questions, uh, people watching this video afterwards when it's not live streaming. Uh, no, they just put a comment in the comment oh, section right. below. Comment <laughs> it's that easy. Uh, so that is it for... Uh, Let us know if you want to see more of these too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we have classes like every weekend for the next two months. So yes, so that is uh, it for this video. And I know I had done a poll uh, asking people... What do they want to see? Uh, and they want to see every every uh, class that we have. Uh, most of the single independent ones were for the wool processing. Uh, and I didn't put anything in there saying, I don't want to see any classes. And then I thought about that afterwards. Uh, well, maybe there are people out there that don't want to, but uh, no, everybody wants to see these, right? Uh, but again, uh, leave it in the comment section. Uh, we are, there's a, a bunch of different, if you go over to our Facebook page, you'll see all the classes that we have lined up, uh, candle making, uh, there's an essential oils class, I think, uh, we're going to have to make sure we tell people that we're going to live stream next time, uh, so we don't run into the problems that we had today. Uh, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. I did post another video on our channel earlier today. I figured, well, if I'm not filming, I'll go out and I'll, uh, show you a little bit uh, about the animals out in the yard uh, and that's about it so don't need a gym membership don't need a gym membership no so no. from all of us here at the 10 acre woods uh, have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time see you later bye, bye.